So it works out the way God wanted it to. And I'm still here and I'm still breathing and I'm still preaching and so are you. And you all went home to your families last night and you ought to rejoice in that. You ought to rejoice the fact that, you don't, that you're not part of that hell hole that you saw up there. That that's not your life. That God has redeemed you, he has saved you, he's brought you out of that into his marvelous light. Now, we're going to talk about what the scriptures say about the spirit of Sodom. I thought in honor of Pride Month, I ought to show them what God says about their pride just like we did yesterday, and ought to show people. So these will all go online and people can see exactly what God says about their pride and that spirit. By the way, the thing you're gonna, a lot of bells are gonna ding for you guys that went out there with us when you look at this, because you're gonna, you're gonna when, when we walk through the scriptures and we show you the spirit of the Sodomite and the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah, you're gonna actually see, well, yeah, I saw that yesterday. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. I mean, we, we saw that live yesterday. That was the reaction that was there. Uh, that was the thing that took place right there. Amen. So this was us yesterday out there preaching. And uh, boy, it didn't take too long. And a lot of people got mightily upset. Now, you'll you'll notice here that here's their event in here. We were standing out here and they had to come to us to be violent. We, we didn't go into them. They had to come to us. Right. And they came to us. Right. So these are the crowds that were there. And people say, well, why would, you, why would you go to such a place like that? Like, why would you go there? Because these are all souls to whom Jesus died for. No one else is going to go tell them. Right? By the way, how do you think, you know, we, we walked out on our own accord. Obviously, we were kind of chased a little bit too. But we walked out on our own accord. You think about it. We weren't like the Apostle Paul. They grabbed the Apostle Paul by his hair and dragged him out of the city. And then stoned him outside of the city. Boy, I think I had it pretty easy yesterday, Brother Paul, don't you? I think I, think I had it pretty easy. I just had really weird effeminate dudes in my face with Australian accents. But that wasn't too <laughs> There's, mate. <laughs> right? And they picked on the two tall guys. Luke and uh, Garrick, man, they were... <laughs> All right. The Bible teaches us all that we need to know about what we need to know about the Sodomite. The Bible shows us very clearly what you need to learn about that, what, that you need to know the truth about these things. If God didn't want you to know it, he wouldn't have put it in his word. But he put it in his word because he wants you to understand it. By the way, after this, you'll understand better what you saw yesterday by going through the scriptures, by God showing you. The Bible explains in great detail the characteristics of the Sodomite. What type of spirit do they have? What does God say about that? See, if this book is not your authority for everything, then you have no authority for anything. Because you end up, you end up uh, following the shifting sands of, of pop culture, the, the ever-changing world. You follow psychologists or you follow, God forbid that you ever be so foolish to follow the federal government in what they say. Because if you follow all of those things except God's word, everyone has an authority today. For your life, for your heart, for your mind, everyone has an authority. Right now, you have one. Either it's you, either it's someone else, or it's God through his word. Everyone has an authority that they follow. Everybody has, it's not my truth versus your truth. It's the truth. Amen. It's the truth. That's, that's the way it is. Oh, you can have your own post, that's postmodernism that, oh, we all have a truth. No, there's one truth. It's Jesus Christ. It's the word of God, right? When some guy walks down the street and tells me he was in a furry outfit yesterday and he, he was acting like a coyote. You know, he was dressed like, what was that? Remember that coyote furry dude that was out there? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell him the truth. You're, you're not a coyote. I don't care what delusional people tell you you're a coyote. You're not. And please stop barking at me. That isn't very nice. Right? Bark. They were barking at us. Bark at me. Genesis 13, 13. We saw something like this yesterday, a few things like that. Uh, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. God's words. Like you, you wonder, yesterday you went out and you were thinking, you look at this and you're, you're, you're thinking, well, man, it, this is bad. Well, yeah. What did God say they were? says they were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly, abundantly, greatly 
over the top sinners. That's, that's what God said about them. To a very great degree, wicked. <laughs> By the way, the first time we see that about the, the men of Sodom, we see Genesis 13, 13. That number 13 is a number for rebellion. Or it's the number of God's love in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, right? But to the world, to them, number 13, rebellion. It's a rebellion. The whole sodomite lifestyle, the whole lifestyle of the homosexual, the whole lifestyle of the LGBTQ is absolutely rebellion to God. And by the way, you say, well, you're teaching everyone, you know, young children, everybody to understand. Yeah, I'm teaching you to understand this now because the public school is going to indoctrinate you into something else. The, 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 the media and the world is going to indoctrinate you into something else. And I'm going to tell you the absolute truth from God's holy word. Amen. So you are well equipped to understand it. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. God's word. The sin of the sodomite is rebellion to God. It's rebellion to his order. It's rebellion to God making them in the beginning male and female. It's rebellion of the command to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Absolute rebellion. By the way, let me say something about this. They can't have children, so they want yours. I'll say it again to you. They can't have children, so they want yours. I unapologetically, unashamedly say that to you. Stone-faced, I say that to you with no backup and no apology. That's what they're after. Do you realize yesterday at that event, they had scandally, and I mean absolutely scandally dressed, and gross, perverted, they, most of them stayed in there. It's not like the parade, the parade is way worse. If you think that event was bad, we, we don't go to the parade. Because the parade, they're literally parade naked. There's, and there's little children there on their shoulders with naked men right there. And they're laughing about it. Why? What are they doing? They're grooming them. But they're, they're grooming them. That's, that's what they're doing. I, I'm not going to pull any punches. I, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get kicked off YouTube. But I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you the truth. That's exactly what they're doing. That is what they're doing. And if you think what I'm saying is hate, you don't know what love is. Because I'm the one that's standing here angry because they're grooming little children. Oh, right? Like, we should be mad about that, right? We shouldn't be happy about that. We should be like doing jumping jacks about that. We shouldn't hand over children to that. And now they want to do it in the public schools, and they are doing it in the, in, in the government-ran schools right now, aren't they? Genesis 18.20 is the next time we see the reference. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And because their sin is very grievous. So stop right there. Anybody grieved? Yeah, I was. Were you? I mean, you wonder why when you walk away from an event like that and things like that. Man, I just feel so sorrowful and, I, I, and grief in my heart. Yeah, well, yeah, you do. So did God. And because their sin is very grievous. That's, that's what God said. God said their sin now, so the next time somebody says, well, all sin's the same, all sin's the same, no, nothing matters, all sin's the same, everything's the same, you're a sinner, I'm a sinner, everybody's a sinner, right? Well, we understand that everybody's a sinner in need of Jesus Christ. We're not talking about what qualifies you for hell. We, we understand that. Anything qualifies, you existing <laughs> qualifies you for hell. That's, that's what we're, we're sinners, right? We have a sin nature. We qualify for hell, right? We do qualify, and we... We sin. So I'm not talking about that. But the Bible says that their sin is very grievous. That sin is. We're not better than them. I'm not, and by the way, you'll hear that at the end of this. But, but I'm not saying I'm better than them. That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the sin of the sodomite is very grievous to God. To God. God said that. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. Now, God already knew. That's not why he said that. He said that for the benefit of Abraham. He was telling Abraham, but Abraham, I'm just, I, I'm going to go down there, Abraham. I'm going to sit. Well, God didn't go in the city. 
And that's good for them. Because everything would have melted around him. Just like if God showed up to a lost and dying world like that, right? And walked through there, right? And without the veil of the flesh of Christ, right? Then guess what? Everything's melting. When Jesus comes back, what happens? Everything's melting. Amen? Why? Because he's holy. That's why God's holy. And God said, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to look at their sin. I'm going to see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. So God's going down. God's going to send his angels down. God's staying there and he's talking to Abraham, right? And he's going to send those in. What does Abraham do? Man, Abraham, he's trying to, he's trying to intercede for them. Abraham is praying for them. Abraham says, well, God, peradventure, if there's 40, peradventure, if there's 30, Abraham's like running the numbers down. He's like, oh man, can we get 10 out of here? Can we get 11 out of here? Just, can we just, can we save them, Lord? Can we, if there's 10 righteous, if there's 20 righteous men, can we spare the city, Lord, so they don't all have to die? God said, okay, he le left off with 10 there, right? Wasn't 10. Right? God says they were wicked exceedingly. The cry is great. So God sees sin. By the way, he sees it in your heart. He sees it in my heart. He sees it in everyone's hearts. But God sees the sin. God doesn't ignore that. If you think God ignored the sin of what happened yesterday, the sins of those things and that group and that city, by the way, and those police officers and all those different things, that God ignored that? God didn't ignore that. God doesn't ignore that. God, God sees that sin. God's not ignoring it. What's going on? He's not. God's merciful. He's He's merciful. And long-suffering, that's right, he's waiting, right? Next time someone says to you, all sin is the same, you'll remember what the Bible says about it being very grievous to God. And that, that God actually sent his messengers down there to see, you know, that's, he sent them down there to pull Lot out. By the way, he pulled Lot out because he was faithful to Abraham. <laughs> that's why he pulled, and Lot was a righteous man. Hard to believe that righteous man vexed his soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, right? Genesis 19.1. So we move along, and the next time we see the spirit of the Sodomite, we see it here. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So the two angels come into Sodom, and Lot knows already they're from God. Why? Because Lot was from God. You, when you're a born-again believer, when you're a Christian, when you understand with the grace of God, when you've been saved like that, you'll recognize when God's moving. You'll recognize God's spirit. You'll recognize when people are of the Lord, right? They have a countenance that's different than that of Sodom. Just like all those people without our banners up or anything. When we walked through that group yesterday, man, they all looked at us. They all knew. Well, one reason they knew is because we all had clothes on. That's a good reason. You're all dressed, right? Your, your bodies are all covered. You're not running around naked. Well, must be something wrong with those people. So they thought, well, they're not with us. They got clothes on. <laughs> we said, help because we had shirts on. <laughs> and there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Now, I have a theory about that. <laughs> Just a theory. I think those angels wanted to be in the street all night because they're like, yep, we're going to burn this whole place. <laughs> we'll sit right here and we'll let them come right up to us because they were already angry. They saw the sin. They knew what it was and they were ready to, God was ready to take out that city and, and they were going to die. And he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. By the way, you know why Lot wanted them in the house? He didn't want them out in the street. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He didn't know the nature of those men exactly until they revealed it to him. He just knew that they were from the Lord. He didn't know what they were, right? He didn't know exactly everything about them. But he was like, oh, you can't stay outside. You can't stay. You can't stand in the sidewalk in Sodom at night. You can't, you can't sit out in the sidewalk in Sodom at night. You, there's no way you can do that. No, there wasn't. So he pressed upon them and they, they went inside. 
So here's like a kind of a depiction of Lot. Here's here's Lot in the city, right? And he's at the gates of the city. Um, and here's these two messengers that come in, right? And he's meeting them at the gate of the city. So he's right there at the gate with them, and he's speaking to them, and he's like, you got to come inside. You don't want to be out here at night, right? You ever been to some cities that you don't want to be out here at night, right? Like those Antifa thugs and those other guys told us out there, you better not be here at night, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Nothing's changed. By the way, are you seeing this that like nothing's changed, right? Like it's still the same today. We went, we went to the Twin Cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? We walked out in the street before we said anything. They were angry before you say anything. Genesis 19, 4, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, round, excuse me, both old and young and all the people from every quarter. They compassed them about. They surrounded them. Both old and young and all the people from every quarter. All the people. So it wasn't only the men that were perverted, it was the women and children that were perverted by the example that was before them. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? They were looking for those men. They knew they came in the city. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. In comes the sod mob, right? Looks familiar, guys, except the fire. <laughs> but here they come, right? They're looking for those men. The Bible says both old and young. What did we see yesterday? Same thing. By the way, the old sodomites recruit the young. No one is born a sodomite. They're recruited. They're recruited. That lifestyle is either permitted, showed, pushed on them, taught them, all those things. Groomed in them, that's, that's what they do. They're recruiters. They recruit the young. By the way, they're doing it right now in all the schools. They're doing it now in, in many of the schools. They're recruiting them. They're teaching them that lifestyle. By the way, that's why they want to. The Bible says that this is confusion. So they teach a child, to, to, make, to, to have any child be active in those areas and to open up those parts of their brains and their minds to, to, to very uh, specific things and dirty things like that, to do that at a young age defiles their mind and it confuses them. It confuses them. Right? That's what it does. So they think they're a sodomite. Or they think they're a lesbian. Or they think they're a transgender. Why? Because someone has confused them. No one has taught them. Right? Parents are supposed to be discreet. They're supposed to teach their children discretion. You teach your children what's right and wrong. You don't let them figure it out their self. That is about the most ridiculous thing ever. Like, talk about not parenting. I'll just let you figure it out yourself. Well, you're a fool. That's the most, that's why God gave them to you for you to teach them. You're supposed to teach them. You don't let, them, if you let it, it's like saying, hey, you see that R stick over there? Just figure it out. Figure out if you're supposed to drink that or not. Right? Figure out if you're supposed to do that or not. No, children are to be guided and taught. And they do that. The old sodomites recruit the young ones. They taught the children perversion just like they want to teach yours. They want to. They want to institute it everywhere that they can do that. Why? Because they're recruiters. Because the Bible says it's without natural affection, which we'll talk about later this afternoon. So what that means is, is that it's not naturally in a child to do that. It's not naturally in a person to do that. That's not natural. It has to be something unnatural that is introduced to cause that. And make no mistake about it, it was. It was indoctrinated into there. It was taught that. That's why they're like that. That's why. It's 
That's the way it works. The people came from every quarter, like we talked about. They wanted to know them. That means to rape them. That's as easy as I could, as simple as I can say that without being, and as discreet as I can say that, that's exactly what they wanted to do. That's what they taught. That's what they wanted to do. By the way, that's what all sodomites want to do. That's the spirit they have. No, I meant nice ones. They're not like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the spirit they have. I'm going to tell you something right now. When you go and if you look at the figures and the numbers, sodomites will have on an average of 500 partners in their lifetime. That's, that's not a joke. Forced or willingly. That's the, see, this is the truth that nobody wants to talk about because it's not politically correct. If you talk about this, you just hate people and you don't love people. No, I love you. That's why I'm going to show you what God's word says. I'm going to show you how you can receive forgiveness. Amen. I'm going to show you redemption in Christ Jesus. I'm going to show you that you can be changed supernaturally by the power of God. But I'm going to show you the truth of that perversion. Because no child is going to grow up in this church that, that's under the sound of my voice that has heard the, the preaching. It's going to be able to say, well, how come no one ever taught on this? No, we're going to teach on all those hard things, all those subjects like that, all those things that. And you say, well, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, that's all right. I'm not, I don't like it either. But, but it's just the Bible. No, we don't like it. By the way, they were bold in their sin. Isaiah 3, 9. Remember, they're up at the gates and they say, that we may know them. So they surround them. Remember this picture? They're surrounding those men. They're surrounding Lot's house, and they're very bold in their sins. So the Bible says in Isaiah 3, 9, they show forth the, their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. What were they doing? Pride. They're, they're proud. You say, oh, the Bible says that the reason why Sodom, I've heard people say this, the Bible says that the reason why Sodom uh, fried was because of their pride. Well, yeah, we've never denied that. But God says that the sin, the sin of that Sodomite, the sin of their, is pride. Like, that's the reason why they do what they do. You are very proud when you think you can go against God's natural order of things. When you can go, abs I mean, of course you're proud. And of course, you would, you would declare your pride, right? You would declare your sin as Sodom. They declare it. They admit it. They, they openly boast about it. That's what they do. Ezekiel 16, 49. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride. Like, no one's at, why, why does that have to be different? I had, I had one lady tell me one time in an independent fundamental Baptist church, she told me, she said, I don't know why people make such a big deal about homosexuality. It's not like it's one of the seven abominations. I'm like, uh, do you ever read your Bible? Or do you like, did you ever do it? Like, okay. Yeah, I think she was, Brother Paul. Yeah, just a little bit. You know, they couldn't blush, though, right? They had, they, they had what the Bible calls a whore's forehead. They couldn't be ashamed of what they did. And they're not ashamed. They're, they're not ashamed of what they do in that sense, in front of men anyway. There's some, of the, there's some of them that no doubt probably are. Genesis 19, 6, And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And, and he sa and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. So Lot calls it wicked. Again, he said it's wicked what they want to do. He is not speaking of the forcing or the raping as much as he is speaking of the sin of the sodomite. You say, how do you know that? Well, because in the next verse, he offers his daughters to them. He thought that the sin of the sodomite was so much more heinous than even allowing them to, to, to abuse his daughters. Now, Lot's thinking was very skewed. Evil communication corrupts good manners, right? But guess what? He knew that that was so heinous to him of an act, that it was that unnatural. That's how God views it. But Lot was wrong, and we'll talk about that later. 
Genesis chapter 19, verse number 8, Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto, the, unto you, and do ye to them as good as in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Now, it is true that one of the Middle Eastern customs is like, if somebody were to come to visit your house, they're under your protection, so you were to protect them, right? You were to, like, like if, they, if harm happened to them, that would be an abuse upon you, that you allowed that to happen to them while they came under the shadow of your roof. But Lot forgot that he was supposed to protect his daughters, <laughs> right? But guess what? When you're in Sodom, your affections are all messed up. His, his affections were not, everything was messed up. His judgment was clouded. He was confused. He was in the heat of panic in the moment. Think about the, well, let me ask you a question. Let's go back. So here's this mob right here, right? They're all standing at your door, and you're in the heat of the moment. You're like, oh, my goodness, they're going to kill us all, right? Well, I guess he thought that was the best solution, but thank God that for his grace and that God is good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd help to. <laughs> You know something, though? The Bible says that Lot, he, he went out there to speak to those men. He tried to reason with them. When they get so incensed like that, you know what happens? You can't reason with them. I don't care how many nice things you said to some of those people yesterday and how much you told them you cared and you preached the Bible to them and, and you cared about their souls and everything else. They, some of those people could not be reasoned with. You, you couldn't reason with them. The men of Sodom, they were past the point of no return. They could not be reasoned with. Nothing, anything that they said, here's Lot, trying, he's trying to talk to him like, you know, you, you don't want to do this wickedly. You don't want to act like this. You don't want... Yesterday, when we're talking to those men that were chasing us down, they, they couldn't be reasoned with. Right? They, they couldn't. That one guy, finally, at the end, you were able to reason with him, right? When passions were calmed down, but he wouldn't, they wouldn't be, but they still didn't listen, right? They couldn't be reasoned with. They get past the point. Why? When you get so, passions take you so much, and lust takes you so much, you can't be reasoned with. That's what happens. Genesis 19, 9. And they said, stand back. So these, these, uh, Stand back. Get out of our way. That's what those Sodomites said to him. Stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. So he said, if you think we're going to rape them, you haven't seen nothing yet if you don't get out of our way. That's the spirit of the LGBTQ. That's the spirit of Sodom. And you might be here and say, not my baby, not my friend, not my child, not my grandchild, not my cousin, not this, not that. That's God's word. That's the authority. And every time we see that, we see unreasonable perverts. And that's the extent and the area that they go with that. And if you trust your children around them, you're insane. Bottom line, plain and simple. No trust for that. Stand back and they said again, by the way, because when somebody is like that, when they turn, when they turn this way, they're into recruit mode. Like they want everybody to be like them. You don't understand. Those sodomites yesterday didn't want us just to accept their lifestyle. They didn't want us just to affirm their lifestyle. They wanted us to join into their lifestyle. Do you understand? Like, like, it'll never be enough. You'll never, you'll never accept them enough, be nice enough to them, be kind enough, affirm them enough. You'll never do any of those things that it's never enough. Why? Not unless it's participation. Do you understand that? So if you got transgenders and you got sodomites and you got, they want participation. Willingly or unwillingly.
Every time you see it in the Bible, that's what you find. What am I supposed to do? Make up something else for somebody's family member? Make something else up for somebody's friend? Make something else up for somebody? Oh, but I have a friend that does Yeah, uh-huh. You, I ain't got no friends that are sodomites. I don't got no friends that are sodomites. Why? Because I'm a Bible believer, that's why. And they ain't going to be friends with me. Right. That's right. The friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's the way it goes, friend. I don't hate him either. Like I told him a thousand times, we don't hate you. We're here out of the mercy of God to preach the gospel because we want you to be saved. We don't want you to, get, we don't want you to end up in hell. No, you hate me because you won't participate with me. That's why they want your children to do that. I'm not, I'm not a dumb dog that can't bark. I'm going to bark. And I'm going to bark loud. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn. He will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? By the way, they, they, and they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near the door to, near to break the door. By the way, what did they accuse him of? Being a judge. Oh, you're our judge? Judge not! You're just here judging. God says don't judge. Right? Yeah, that's what they said. Judge not. Judge not. I said, where, wait, where's your love and tolerance at? That's what I asked him yesterday. Where's your, where's your, aren't you tolerant? No, I actually love. I'm, I'm beyond tolerant. I see that. I see that when the gang of Satanists in, uh, in robes came after us with staffs in their hands. What was that about? Oh, man. <laughs> they were in togas, man. <laughs> With, and one guy had the staff on his head like this. He was standing, was it in front of you, Garrick? Or where was he standing in front of Garrick? And it, it looked like it didn't. I thought the munchkins were coming out. <laughs> it's like, here they come. Anyway, we weren't invited to the costume party. Uh, but they accused him of being a judge, didn't they? By the way, they threatened to do worse than that to Lot. I know, and some of you think, well, they would never... Not my friend that, yeah, your friend. That's a spirit. It's, it, it's called unnatural affection for a reason. Which means that every way they view everything in life when it comes to those things is not natural like you would. So the barrier of a child is not natural to them. You, you understand that? The barriers of... of by the way, here's another thing. Here's another misnomer, and I'll probably talk about it again at some point in this, but I, I want you to understand this. As you see in this story, and we'll talk about it in the afternoon, I, I don't know if we get to the Benjamite in this story. We might. But uh, if, 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 or in this, in this uh, sermon. But here's the thing I want you to understand about this. Like, you think, like, you ever heard women say, well, they have a lot of, they have a lot of, uh, sodomite male friends. They have a lot of homosexual male friends, right? They like they hang out with male because well, they don't have any interest in them. No, what you don't understand, a pervert is a pervert. And if you have a spirit like that, they'll rape a monkey. I'm just when you're given over to that perversion like that, I know some of you are looking at me like a bullfrog in a hailstorm. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I understand, is this, I can't help it. I, I got to tell the truth. I, I, I got to tell, tell the truth. I have to. And it's uncomfortable, people. And I know you don't like it. And, you're, and some of you might think, well, what about my chip? I haven't said anything that the Bible hasn't said. I haven't got into any discreet thing, or I mean, um, indecent things deeply, and I won't. Right? This isn't the pride crowd. We're not going to be preaching Sunday morning, right? Like we have to to harden sinners that have to have, right? I, I know where I'm at. They threaten to do worse than, than, than that to him and to kill him. By the way, this is the violent rage of the sodomite. Many of them are recruited into that lifestyle through rape.
He reasoned with, Matthew Henry said this about him. He said he reasoned with them, pleaded the laws of hospitality and the protection of his house, which his guests were entitled to, that he, but he might as well have offered reason to a roaring lion and a raging bear. As to these headstrong sinners who were governed only by lust and passion. Presumpt he goes on to say, presumptuous sinners do by their consciences as the sodomite did by Lot. Baffle their checks, stifle their accusations, press hard upon them till they have seared them and quite stopped their mouths and so made themselves ripe for ruin. Abuses, abuses offered to God's messengers and to faithful reprovers. Look at this. By the way, this is before yesterday, right? Look at this. Abuses offered to God's messengers and to faithful reprovers soon fill the measure of a people's wickedness and bring destruction without remedy. God does that. He's not talking about man doing it. He's talking about God doing that. That's God that will do that. God's going to judge this world. No one's getting away with anything. Without remedy. That's what happened in Sodom. Proverbs 29.1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. They won't listen. Won't listen. Won't listen. Truth comes and won't listen. By the way, God never told you to stop giving them the truth even though they don't like it. Right? I want to remind you of something. Every single one of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ were murdered, except John. All of them. And they weren't murdered for the way they said it. Or they, they should have done it a different way. Or they should have been nicer. Or maybe if they did some cupcake theology and they bake them cupcakes, right? That that would have made it better. I don't care what you wrap, what kind of bow you wrap it in and you tell them that. Though all of those apostles were killed. And Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. It hated me before it hated you. And if they kill the, the, the master of the house, what are they going to do to his servants? Right? That was a paraphrase, that last part. But what are they going to do to the servant? They're going to kill him too, right? We are going to suffer reproach. We are going to deal with that. But somebody better be willing. Amen? And seeing how it's been commissioned to the Lord's church to do it, we better do it. They surrounded him. They were ready to knock the door down to get to them. That is the spirit of the LGBTQ. Genesis 19, 10, but the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. All right, God's angel said, all right, that's enough. <laughs> I've had enough. Psst. Pulls them in. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they were wearied, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. What does that mean? They were like this. So they blinded them, and in their lust and their rage, they're still looking for the door handle. They, they still want to. They're still bent on raping them. Like you. And by the way, if you think it was only those angels they were going to mess with, after they were that mad, they were going to bust that whole house through and they were going to destroy all of them. They thought. By the way, the heathen think they're going to do a lot of things. Right? But it's God that, that, is, man's, that is our protector, that is his children's protector, right? He, listen, what yesterday should have showed any of you men is this. The police aren't your protection. A gun isn't your protection, right? The ambassadors and the, uh, of, uh, of Minneapolis and the security guards and any of those people are not your protection. Your, your, your great fighting skills aren't your protection. The rent-a-cops aren't your protection. But the Lord Jesus Christ is your protection. It's the Lord. It's God that protects his children, right? By the way, so these angels, they come out, and I don't know how they smote them with blindness, but maybe they just revealed what they look like in heaven to them, and they all just, their eyeballs fried. But um, probably something similar to that. So they're blinded, and they're looking for the door. They're still looking for the door. Like, they haven't, they haven't left off. They're still, that's their spirit. Like, the, the restraint is not there. 
You get a crowd like yesterday of 400,000 of those, it's God Almighty that kept them from killing us. There wasn't any police there. They, they weren't willing. They should have been there. They should have done their job, seeing how they're paid a lot of money to do it, but they're too busy killing poor black guys by sticking knees on their neck, right? Oh, oops. Ouch. See, that guy was a drug addict. Yeah, he was, but I still wouldn't have killed him. Back the blue. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'm just telling you, that's what they did. They did it. Then four guys watched him squirm on the ground. Well, he's not breathing. He's not moving, right? That's the spirit, right? Well, I mean, look, look, if you're looking for a Trump sermon, you're not going to get one here. Oh. You're, you're not, you're, you're, you're not going to get one here. Because I'm an equal opportunity. I'm an equal opportunity destroyer when it comes to those things. I will just go ahead and tell you the truth about both of them. They both need Jesus. That's what they need. They wearied themselves to find it. Because by the way, you ought to have compassion on people. And you're talking to somebody who trained in martial arts for 15 years. I know how to choke somebody and I know when to stop. I know when their body stops. I know when, when to restrain, how to restrain them without even harming them. And I've done it since I've been a Christian tons of times and never harmed one person doing it. Not one. And stop people from fighting and hurting themselves. More than one occasion I've done it and never harmed them at all. And they were fine. But what it, when, when a cop looks at me in that city and tells me, do you think I really care what happens to you? And I look at him and say, well, no. I mean, you're Antichrist. We don't think you care about. Of course not. Yeah, that's, that's protect and serve, right? So forgive me if I don't have my officer friendly hat on. Um, I, I just, I've just been around a while. I've seen it. I'm not like deceived by it. I watch cops get paid a lot of money and not do their job. Is there a balance on the other side? Yeah, there is. Sure there is. But you know what? Those in authority have a responsibility, just like I do. I'm a pastor. I have a responsibility, right? So I, I don't get to claim if you don't do something right, I could say, well, they didn't do it right, so I don't have to do it right, right? We don't get to do that, do we? No. When we're in authority, we, we're fathers. We, we, when we're fathers, we have authority. We have responsibility. We don't get to do wrong just because people underneath us do wrong. We have a responsibility. Amen. They have a responsibility. They wearied themselves to find the door. Revelation 16, 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And by the way, if you don't think I don't know that people don't want to come to this church because I tell the truth about things like that, I fully know that. I, but, I, but I am consistent. Go back and listen to me 10 years ago. I said the same thing then. 15 years ago, I've been saying the same thing. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Look at this. And, the, and, and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. Listen to me. Let me explain something to you. Judgment alone will not change a sinner's heart. It doesn't. You remember that. Nothing today... If this, today, if you know that, hell's, it, that, that you're on your way to hell, that's not going to be enough unless you repent and put your faith and trust in Christ. you got to repent and believe the gospel. you got to ask the Lord to change your heart and to make you a new creature. It's not enough. It isn't enough for you that judgment is coming, that God has a judgment. That won't make, that's not enough for people. You see people out there, you tell them there's a hell, and what do they do? They laugh at you. Because judgment's not enough to make them stop, right? Just like, just like this recent thing, and I'm, I'm praise the Lord. There's like 20 states that banned abortion. Good, praise the Lord. One baby saved, praise the Lord, right? We rejoice in that. God, by the way, God's going to bless those states, I believe. I, as crooked as they are in many ways, if they quit shedding innocent blood, God's going to bless them. He will bless them for that. Because God hates the shedding of innocent blood. He hates it. No matter how much they mess up in some areas and do some things wrong, if you quit shedding innocent blood, God looks at that. God sees it because he hates the shedding of innocent blood. So these states, they're, they, praise the Lord for that, right? I praise the Lord for the fact that there's, but guess what? You're not going to change those sinners that are that hardened in their sin. What are they going to do? They're going to drive over to Minnesota and get an abortion. Because they ain't going to change. 
Because the law isn't enough to make people change. Oh, that's not plugged in. Let's see here. Let me take it around this way. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. Thank you, Brother Joshua. Uh, they, they're not, they're not going to, judgment isn't enough to make people change. God scorches them. Look. And what does it say? And they repented not to give him glory. And you got to see your lost hellbound condition before God. You got to see that you're dead in trespasses and sins. Right? If today you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, right? Don't harden your heart against God. When God shows you the truth, when God shows you that you're a lost sinner on your way to hell and you've never come to Christ for salvation, you've never repented and put your faith and trust, there's never been a time that you saw that you were lost and dead in sins and that God revealed unto you that you needed Jesus Christ to save your soul, that your sin is ever before you, that it will destroy you, that it will consume you, that it will take you, that it will lead you to hell. No amount of judgment coming will stop you from sinning. It's only God's grace that changes a heart, makes him a new creature. And then they want to do right. Amen. Grace, grace in the heart, it's a teacher. It makes us want to do right. It teaches us right. By the way, none of us are, none of us that are saved here today, none of us can say, you know what? It's because I'm such a good person. That's why I don't do evil. <laughs> no, it's because of the grace of God. <laughs> it's because it's, we're not better than anybody. We're just better off. Amen. Because of the grace of Almighty God, because Jesus Christ saves sinners and he changes them and he makes them new creatures and old things are passed away and all things are become new, right? Judgment alone will never change a sinner's heart. You can be told that hell is coming, the Bible is true, and you see the truth of the scriptures, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That's the gospel. I think we are going to have time to get through this. We're going to the book of Judges, right? And uh, Judges chapter 19, turn there if you would, please. If not, then you see it right up here. This is the King James Bible, amen? Uh, Judges 19, 22. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, here's another account of a, of a gang of sodomites. By the way, they do run in gangs. Um, and, uh, th that, and they're coming for these men. They're coming for that, that man, that prophet. Boy, there's something about, they don't like innocence. They like to pervert innocence. It's a spirit. They like to pervert innocence. That's what Satan does. He likes to pervert innocence. He likes to destroy it. Destroy it. You know, you remember when you're, when you're a child or you see children, you see the innocence that they have. And it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Like nothing, like they don't see anything like you and I see things that have been in the world, right? We've seen some things that we are, thank God they'll never have to see and we don't want them to ever see it, right? But you see those children and they have an innocency and they're not defiled. They're not, right? They're not like that. So things that to them, nothing's a big deal. To you, you look at something like, oh, that's terrible. It's like, no, they're just kids plenty. They don't, they don't know anything. Little kids, right? They, they're not defiled. Like they don't, praise the Lord for that. Amen. That innocency. That's what God wants you to keep as long as you can. Amen. That's what he wants them to have. And it's a beautiful thing to see. It really is. You know, what peace that, that is, there is in that. And joy, that is, amen, in that. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about. Boy, they like, they like surrounding houses and people and stuff, don't they? they? You noticed that yesterday, didn't you? Boy, they really do like surrounding people. They really do. What, what's up with that? That's their spirit. The men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house. The old man saying, bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. Again. What they want to do. Webster says that uh, Belial is, it, it means an, an unprofitableness, wickedness, worthless, wicked men. Right? Judges 19, now as they were making merry, look what it says here, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the mass, bring forth the man. So bring him out and we want to abuse him, right? By the way, you'll notice they didn't want a sodomite. They wanted somebody that wasn't. They wanted to recruit somebody. 
That's the spirit. That's the spirit that they have. They wanted purity. They wanted. That's what they were after. You know, all these people are so offended and they get so excited. It's like I've never seen anybody. Have you ever seen anybody go so absolutely bonkers crazy because they can't murder babies? Right? You see the spirit that they have. By the way, I think that directly affected some of the things yesterday. The rage. Right? Absolutely. Right? Again, they're recruiters by rape. I had one, one uh, in 2019, I was preaching at the, at the Pride event there. We were. And um, I don't dare go alone to anything like that. But we, we, were, we were preaching there at that Pride event. And this, this uh, sodomite stood up, this homosexual stood up, and he, and he was really mad. And I said, I said he goes, said he was born that way. And I said, no, you, you're recruiters, and that's what you are. And he started busting out crying. And, you know, did his little womanly act and, and uh, tried to act like a woman crying, you know, basically. And I said, well, it's true. You are. See, I don't go by, I, if you ask me to take your authority, I'm not going to, if it's not the Bible. This is what God's word shows that their spirit is. This is I mean, you're, if you're arguing that you're arguing with God, you're not arguing with me. You're saying that, no, my friend is an exception. My family is an exception. My, my so-called relative is an exception. No, there is no exceptions to God's rules, right? That's the spirit that they have. And you shouldn't trust it, right? And you should have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You should reprove them. You should tell them the truth. You should tell them what God's word says. They had a gang rape mentality. By the way, it's a psychological thing too. They raped someone to make them think they're a sodomite. So they again surrounded the house. See, I, I use this picture because look at their eyes. They look like a bunch of zombies, don't they? That's walking dead men. That's what we see. Yeah. Yep. This guy right here assaulted Aaron. This guy was the one screaming burn babies for an hour and a half on a megaphone. Right? By the way, you'll notice where we're at. Well, you won't because none of you are there. But, but uh, where we are at right now, we are nowhere near that event. We are what two blocks two two blocks away, brother Paul. At this point, is this is where we are in that corner. Where that is that where we are, Garrick? About two blocks away from there. They followed us. This guy got out of his car. In fact, he sent me a he sent me a little uh, picture telling me that you know because somebody told him where we were here or whatever, which I don't care, but. Uh, yeah, Aaron did. And, and then so, they, so he sent a little picture telling us how nice he was and how good of a conversation he had with us and all that good stuff. Right, to leave his community. He said, if we come back to that community, he's going to chase us out again. And my answer to you is, well, we'll see about that. I get the signal, this in, breaking, right? But we'll see about that. We'll go back if God tells us to go back, right? That's what we'll do. We'll obey the Lord. And you know something else we should do? We'll do some praying and some fasting, and then we'll go back. Amen. These kind come forth not but by prayer and fasting. Right? I'm going to tell you what, that's giving me goosebumps. I'm thinking about that. I, we're going back. <laughs> we're, go, we're going back. We're going back. And we'll be wise. Amen. Hey, these people need the truth. 
The circumstances are always going to be different. Anyway, this guy, that guy right there you saw clocked Aaron in the face. That was how loving, peaceful, and kind the sodomite movement is. Um, the LGBTQ community, they're so full of love. It's just wonderful, isn't it? They wanted to defile that which was holy. This was a, a man of God this, that, that had come there to them. They wanted to destroy his purity. By the way, think of Disney and the sodomite agenda. If you haven't listened to my broadcast from two weeks ago about Disney, I mean, if you didn't listen to it years ago, then I don't know what you've been doing. But if, but, but if, you, if you didn't listen to this, because I've been preaching on it for 10 years, and by the way, said all those things back then, that they were doing those very things, and now they just openly admit it. On this new broadcast that I did, they openly admit, like they tell you, they tell you, oh yeah. I mean, we're, we're putting uh, transgenders in there. We're putting bisexuals in there, non-binary people in there. Yeah, we're, we're doing all that. And the president of Disney said, look, we can't come out against this don't say gay bill openly because if we do, then people are going to really know our agenda. We can reach people farther through our programming. Did you, did you hear that? They said, we can, we can reach a greater amount of people through our programming. Well, that's what I said when I, 10 years ago, when I preached Disney is programming your children. Please send that to all your family members in a loving package in care of Pastor Cooley at Old Paz Baptist Church. Think about that. That's the spirit of Sodom. It's the spirit of recruiting. They're advertising. That's what, it's like the Masonic order. They're advertising. That's what they do. Judges 19, 23, And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man has come into mine house. Do not this folly. It was folly. That's lewdness, perversion. Behold, here is my daughter. A maiden, and these dudes got issues, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you, but unto this man do not so vile a thing. Again, the spirit of Sodom. Look what the man offers his daughter in the place of the Sodomite. So again, we see that the sod mob cannot be reasoned with. They only know lust and evil. They care not for what they rape. If you take the word of God as your authority. If it's something else, then you'll, you'll psychologically explain it differently. I take the Bible as my authority. Amen. What God said. Judges 19.25, but the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all night until the morning, and when the day began to spring, they let her go. Now remember, Judges is the book where every man did that which is right in his own eyes. This concubine that he had had here, uh, which he shouldn't have had in the first place, but this concubine that he had here, she had committed adultery uh, over and over again and would not come back to him. In Israel, the, the, the sentence for adultery in the Old Testament was death. She was going to die. She was going to die. That doesn't justify anything. In the book of Judges, don't ever look for, don't, be careful in the book of Judges if you take your Bible doctrine and your, from, from uh, the book of Judges that when God says that, that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. You know, we take it from the, obviously, the New Testament is our authority. We see things that are repeated from the Old Testament. The whole Bible is our authority, but we see things from the Old Testament repeated in the New Testament that Paul talked about, which are applicable to us. Amen. And we see that in what Jesus had said in the scriptures. So, uh, and they raped her like a bunch of savage animals. Which is what they would have exactly done to that man. And that is the spirit of Sodom. That's who they are. And they are vile. The last thing we see in Judges 20 is the Benjamites would not give up the Sodomites. Evil communication corrupts good manners, right? Judgment came upon the Benjamites and many died. But God judged Israel first for her fornication or wicked sins. Remember, some of those Israelites died. Why? Because they were in sin too. They weren't right. You know what? There's a whole lot of churches out there that aren't right with God. There's a whole lot of churches that aren't following the scriptures and aren't 
and aren't keeping sin out of their life and aren't having good marriages and families and everything else that are in sin. And God's going to, judgment must begin at the house of God. This country is a direct result of the weakness of churches and the weakness of spiritual power. That's what it is. Because let me tell you something. But let's be real here. Andrew, how, if you had to guess, what would you say the number of, let's just say independent Baptist churches in the whole state of Minnesota, would there be 50 of them, 100 of them? What would you say? Yeah. Maybe let's just say 40. Okay, what would happen? Or let's just say Baptist period, right? Let's just, let, let's just do that. What would happen if all of those churches showed up yesterday and they were all outside of that event with us? And they were, and they were, and there were, 300 men preaching the gospel in the streets. They would have needed more hecklers. Do you see what I mean? Why would it be one? Where are the other churches? Where are they? Like, they're not tracting. They're not warning. They're not preaching. They're not handing out. They're not doing anything. They're not opposing it. Right. They're all hiding inside of the churches, buildings, that is. They're hiding inside of them, and they're like, well, you go into the closet. The sodomites are out of the closet, and they're all going in the closet. So they're all shoved in their corporate buildings, and they're like, we're not going to go preach them. Yeah, exactly. By the way, remember this. Sodomites are very religious people. Deuteronomy 32, 32 says, For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. What do we have here? Gall. Grapes of gall. They're bitter. You've never seen a more bitter people. You've never seen a more bitter people than those people, ever, ever. Their wine is the poison of dragons. Poison. Their vine poisons people. Cruel venom. They're cruel. They are very cruel. Venom from a snake. That's how God relates it. Now, if you go to public school right now and somebody that hears this online, they're, right now what you're thinking of, this is the most intolerant, mean thing I've ever heard my whole life. Well, not yet. Hang on, keep listening. But uh, it, it's, it's not mean, it's just truth. Oh, this is just the truth. But people are so, you're told that you're not allowed to tell people the truth anymore. Like, you're not allowed to speak for God anymore. You're not allowed to tell the truth about things anymore. You've just got to comply, and you've got to participate, and you've got to be a part of the program. Right? Well, God's people have never been part of the program. That's why they've always been killed. Right? 2 Kings 23, 17, he break down the houses of the sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the grove. Here you have it, religious people. Where do they want to be? Where do the sodomites want to be? Right by the house of the Lord. And now in some of those apostate houses. But that's where they want to be. Like yesterday, you had four or five churches in the middle of that sodomite event. And, they, and somebody said to us, they're doing more good than you are. I was like, no, they're doing more bad. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. And their, their women wove the hangings for the groves. By the way, that's like the pornography. That's what that is. You think pornography is new. No, it's not new. That's, that's what they did. They carved and they made and they wove and they, they, they carved. That's what they did right there. That's right. All kinds of things. That's what they did. Not new. Your Bible has it right there. God, 
God said it. God foretold it. They, they like to be right by the house of the Lord. The vine of Sodom loves to try to grow near it. Jesus is our vine, though. I am the vine, you're the branches. Amen. Right? His grapes are good grapes. Right? Deuteronomy 23, 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. That's a principle, by the way. That's a principle for you and I that we see. Right? None of the daughters of God's children, none of those that are saved by the grace of God should ever be a whore. Should ever be in fornication, should ever live like that. None of them should ever be a sodomite. Could ever be. And be God's child. They don't understand that it's absolutely against the nature of God. And the nature of, of, of even the way he made. Uh, I talked about this in, in a sermon called Homosexuality is a Cult Worship, Hitler, Crowley, and Secret Societies. If you listen to that, what you'll find out that is, is homosexuality is intimately involved with the religious movement. It was involved with Hitler and those men that did what they did and uh, all of the occult practices, uh, Roman Catholicism uh, and some of those uh, priests that have been caught in um, uh, pedophilia and other things like that that have been, been part of that. What's that? The, yeah, the Republican Party. Yeah, exactly. The log cabin Republicans and... and uh, Oh, and Donald Trump as the, 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 he was supposed to be like the savior uh, of the Republicans, and he brought in the biggest sodomite movement ever. And I can prove it, and I dare you to prove me wrong. Dare you to prove me wrong. He single-handedly turned that entire party. And by the way, some people are saying right now he's going to run for president again, and he's, gonna, and he's, going, to, and he's going to have a, a, a sodomite running mate. And evangelicals are going to vote for him. Stay tuned. What's that? Oh, he's already got those. Yeah, he's got those. Yeah. Anyway, that is the first part one here of the spirit of Sodom. We're going to cover the rest of it in the afternoon. I believe that's the last slide I have there. Yeah. We'll cover the rest of it this afternoon. Uh, and I want to talk to you about what the New Testament says about about the sodomite, what the New Testament says about that. This is the Old Testament going through and showing you. By the way, the New Testament, here's, here's, a, here's a sneak peek. The New Testament same, says the same thing as the Old Testament. So, just so you know, it says the same exact thing, but, but, but a little bit more descriptive, and we'll go through that. A little more descriptive. We'll teach you through the Bible on some words and some passages and some things like that that will help you to understand uh, some of that. I hope that, that you understand that our children and then growing forward, they need to understand what God says about that. Like the, that God never changes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. If you find your, your, your theology uh, um, progressing in that sense or evolving, right? Or like the roles of, of husband and wife or man or woman or whatever that may be in that marriage or, or whatever, um, uh, the, the, the transgender movement and all those homosexuality. And all those, if you find your, your uh, positions evolving, you're wrong because God's word is right. God warned and he said what that was. And you better be very careful the compromises that you make. Because they're very damaging to your children. They can be very, very damaging. By the way, one of the reasons why I would never show you some of the things that we see out there. Because you aren't meant to see those things. We don't, we don't, we don't put ladies and children in places like that or positions like that. Right? So I wouldn't show you those things. I don't want you to see that. I'll tell you scripturally everything that the Bible says, but men, are, men have to endure, all of us have to in some ways endure hardness, but men, men have to go out and soldier, and they have to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. But our children and our women aren't supposed to go, like people ask me, where's your women at? Well, I certainly wouldn't bring them around a bunch of you people. I don't want my wife and children around that, right? Yeah, why are you asking? Good point. Yeah, <laughs> like, what do you want to know? <laughs> Good point, right? But anyway, so just remember that, that there's, that there's a reason why you and I have to endure hardness as men. We go out there and battle. We don't show you all the gory details of it, right? But we show you enough that you understand 
what the battle's like, and then you pray for us. By the way, I absolutely firmly believe that the prayers of God's people, God used those to protect us yesterday. God answered those Amen. prayers. I don't know how anybody could deny that. I really, I really don't. We couldn't, right? Because if you go by the world's economy and the world's math, we should have been ate up alive, brother. We should, right? we should have been absolutely destroyed. But God preserved us, and he kept us, and he will continue to. Till he's done with us, then we'll go home. Amen? Then we'll never see that evil again. Amen? Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank you that they have power. Lord, they refresh my soul this morning. Just going through and just remembering what you said in your word. And Lord, I'm reminded of what you said to us. Think it not strange that fiery trial, which is to try you, though some strange thing happen unto you. We just went through some fiery trials. We saw some things. We experienced some things. But Lord, we saw your grace and your love toward us. Help us to be obedient children. Help us to be submissive children to you. Help us to be willing to go to the down and out. Those that are dead in trespasses and sins. Help our foreheads to be harder than their foreheads. And to preach the truth. And Lord, to remember that these souls, no matter how angry they are, no matter how wicked they are, no matter how vile they are, they're going to go to hell. And you called us to go. Lord, help us to endure hardness as good soldiers. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for each man in here that prayed for us and woman in here that prayed for us and each brother and sister in Christ. And thank you for those online that prayed for us, Lord. We're grateful for it. We thank you for them. Thank you for the brothers and sisters online that bought our dinner last night for us, Lord. What an encouragement that was and a blessing it was for them to do that. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your grace. And Lord, we thank you for each and every person in this room. And Lord, if there be one or two here that has not come to that saving knowledge of Christ, may they see the goodness of Jesus Christ. May they see that he is worthy of all reproach that we suffer. That one day, one day we'll hear from him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And all the reproaches of this world are worth it because you're worthy of it, Christ. May Jesus Christ be praised. In your precious name we pray. Amen.